Senator Seidman. Thank you, Your Honor. My question is for the government leader in the Senate. Earlier today, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency in the United Kingdom gave approval to the Pfizer vaccine for COVID-19. The development and approval of this vaccine is a remarkable achievement, and I extend sincere congratulations to all involved. Next week, people in the UK will begin receiving vaccinations, starting with healthcare workers and long-term care residents and staff. Senator Gold, when does the Government of Canada expect that our country's health care workers and the residents and staff of long-term care homes will begin receiving approved vaccines for COVID-19? Senator Gold. Thank you for your question. It's on top of mind uh, on Canadians and on indeed something upon which this government is engaged on a daily basis indeed. As the Minister Anand uh, announced in, in the media yesterday, the government has been working for a long time now uh, on plans both to procure adequate sources of vaccines and as well to uh, work out the appropriate distribution plans with the provinces and territories uh, and, uh, so that Canadians can have the benefit of those vaccines in a timely fashion. I will not repeat what I said earlier in the chamber about the uh, uh, a success with which this government has had uh, uh, in uh, securing agreements with seven companies to obtain vaccines, many of which uh, are proving to be very promising. Uh, nor should I need repeat uh, to this chamber um, the challenge that Canada faces uh, having lost its manufacturing capacity over the years and therefore having to rely upon vaccines produced uh, elsewhere in the world. The fact remains, however, that the Government of Canada uh, is working uh, on the, uh, and has, been, uh, develop, has developed uh, its uh, distribution uh, plan. It is working with the vaccine producers. The next step, of course, is approval by Health Canada uh, to make sure that the vaccines meet Canadian standards. And the minister announced, uh, uh, stated yesterday, I believe on Power in Politics, but I'm sure in, in, uh, in other platforms, uh, that the next step immediately upon, uh, upon approval is that uh, the vaccines will be uh, will arrive according to the uh, uh, contractual arrangements that, with which they are, uh, uh, to which they are subject, and which the government is actively negotiating uh, with the producers, so that Canadians can have the benefit of vaccines uh, as soon as possible. Senator Seidman, you mentioned distribution a month ago. Canada's National Advisory Committee on Immunization provided preliminary guidance on target groups for early vaccinations. Yesterday, Global News reported that upon learning Canada would receive fewer doses than expected in the first round, the Advisory Committee felt it had no choice but to recommend a ranked system, with people living in long-term care, assisted living, retirement homes and chronic care hospitals receiving the first vaccinations, along with those who take care of them. Leader, the Prime Minister and Premiers have spoken in recent days about the need to ensure consistency across Canada in terms of which populations receive the first COVID-19 vaccinations. When will Canadians learn what the order of distribution will be? Senator Gold. Well, again, thank you for the question. Uh, the, prime, the responsibility of the federal government, which is, it has and is discharging, is to acquire the vaccines, uh, and to, and to uh, get them into Canada once approved by Health Canada. It is also the responsibility uh, of the federal government to work with the provinces and, territor and, and territories uh, to ensure that the uh, vaccines, as they become available in Canada, are distributed appropriately and equitably. Uh, and to that end, the government has uh, uh, secured uh, uh, the assistance of uh, military personnel, other uh, logistical equipment, uh, to make sure that the vaccines that are now on, on stream can be transported safely. At the end of the day, however, it is the, it is the province and territory's responsibility and duty uh, to make those decisions as to priorities uh, for, their, for their residents, and the, Canadian, and the Government of Canada will continue to work with them uh, to ensure uh, that, there is a sh that there is shared information, but also respect for the respective jurisdictions uh, that apply. Uh, 